How many different living things are there in a garden? This man is just one of thousands. In this film, we're going to take a look at some of the other inhabitants. At plants. And at insects. Let's start with insects. First of all, what is an insect? Well, insects are invertebrates. This means that they're inside out compared with most bigger animals like ourselves. We have a hard skeleton inside. Invertebrates have their skeletons on the outside. Look at this wasp. You can see the hard polished outer casing which protects the soft vital organs inside. The casing is made up of hard, springy plates, like a suit of armour. Look, you can see some of the plates there. And here's the rear end of a daddy long legs. Again, you can see the separate plates. All insects have this tough outer covering, but it's sometimes hidden under a lot of hairs, as on this bumblebee. But invertebrates include other creatures as well as insects. So what's special about insects? We went to this pool on the edge of a park where there were some big insects which will give us the answer. You find them in summer where there's water and wild plants around. They're called damselflies. They look a bit like dragonflies, but they're not quite so big. A damselfly's body is divided into three different portions. First, there's the head. This has a mouth and enormous bulging eyes. The damselfly needs good eyesight because it feeds on other insects which it catches in flight. Then, behind the head, there's the thorax. That's the middle bit. All insects have a thorax with three pairs of legs, that's six legs, joined to it. And it's also where the wings are attached. The third portion of the body is the long, thin part. This is the abdomen. It contains most of the digestive organs and all the reproductive organs. All insects have these three parts to their bodies, abdomen, thorax and head. It's easy to see this on a big insect like the damselfly, but it's not quite so easy with some of the smaller insects in the garden like these hoverflies. But if you can get a good close look at one, like this, you can see the six legs. The fly is cleaning its front too, joined onto the thorax, that middle bit to the right of the head, with the wings joined on as well. And the abdomen, the long stripy part, and of course the head with two stumpy little feelers, head thorax, abdomen. Here's another common insect, a daddy long legs or crane fly. No doubt about the six legs there. And here's its head and thorax. See how the legs and wings are joined onto the thorax there? If you look carefully at a beetle, you'll see a head, thorax and abdomen again. A painted lady butterfly. See the head on the right? Then the thorax 
and you can just see part of the abdomen nearly covered by the wings. All insects have these three parts to their bodies. What about this? No, it's not an insect. It has eight legs for one thing. It's a spider and it doesn't belong in this program. Nor does this slug. No head, thorax or abdomen and at no stage in its life does it have any legs. But what about this, which we dug up in spring in one of the gardens? Is this an insect? No sign of a head, thorax or abdomen. But look, there are six legs. In fact, this is an insect larva. You see, many insects don't hatch out from their eggs as little insects and grow bigger. They hatch as larvae. Larvae of moths and butterflies are called caterpillars, and that's what this is, a moth caterpillar. It's just about fully grown, and we put it back in the soil. A few weeks later, it had changed into this, a pupa. We call it a chrysalis when it's the pupa of a moth or butterfly. Inside this pupa, the larva is turning into the adult insect. You can see where the head is. And the wings. The pointed bits where the abdomen is forming. It may look dead, but it's not. After another week or two, we found the case empty. This adult moth had come out, a dark archer's moth, quite common round many gardens. This changeover from larva to pupa to adult insect is called metamorphosis, and a lot of different insects go through such a process. We'll meet a lot of different insect larvae in these films, caterpillars and other kinds, and we'll also find out about their great appetites. The important thing to remember is that many insects start off as larvae which look nothing like the adult, and each of these caterpillars will turn into a butterfly like this one. What about adult insects? What do they do? Well, they don't grow anymore, so they don't need as much food as the larva. Many of them just sip nectar from flowers. and they spend a lot of time cleaning themselves up. Insects have sense organs for smelling and tasting and hearing on their antennae, the feelers, and on their legs, even on their bodies, and they've got to keep these clean so that they work properly. Watch this wasp eating an apple. Its antennae keep getting sticky, so it cleans them up. Here's an ichneumon fly having a good clean up on a holly leaf. Here's a burnet moth, one of the colony at the local railway station. It's got sense organs on its legs. and also on these big antennae. It uses them to find food and also to find a mate. Here they are actually mating. 
and later the female will lay her fertilized eggs. Two crane flies mating. And two leaf beetles. Remember, all living things have got to produce young, and most insects reproduce sexually. Well, so much for insects. Now, what about that other great group of living things, the plants? Like insects, plants come in all shapes and sizes. But all green plants have things in common. They live in the middle of their food supply. Through their roots, they take up mineral salts from the soil and turn them into the building materials that they need. And they have green leaves, chemical factories, which use the carbon dioxide in the air, water, and the action of sunlight to make carbohydrates, the other food they need. This is a process called photosynthesis. And like all other living things, plants have to reproduce. Some plants do it like this creeping buttercup in one of the gardens. Do you see what's happened? The plant has just sent out a runner and grown new plants. There they are, each with its own roots, and its own leaves. This is called vegetative reproduction. It's non-sexual. But plants can also reproduce sexually. The sexual organs are in the flowers. Flowers can be male or female, or there may be both male and female organs in the same flower. The male produces pollen, which corresponds to the sperm of male animals, and this fertilizes the female part of the plant. Very often, insects play the main part in carrying the pollen to the female organs. In fact, without insects, flowers would never have developed. You can see pollen stuck to the back of this bee. After fertilization, seeds are formed and drop to the ground. Then very often the parent plants die, leaving the seeds to go through the winter and grow into new plants the next spring. Plants which do this are called annuals. But some plants live on through the winter. When the cold weather comes, they appear to have died off above ground, but the roots are still alive. The plants said to be dormant. Plants which do this are called perennials. In spring, they send out new shoots and grow again. And with the spring, the flowers and the insects appear again. When you plant something in the garden, you're not just creating a place to live for the plant.
you're also providing a little world for many insects. Insects and plants matter a lot to each other and we'll take a closer look at how and why another time.